That leap from the high 500s to 700 plus on SAT math is huge, but it's one of the most common large increases I see in test prep. I use math chops to help students in this score range with four things. Solidifying fundamentals, learning new questions that are pretty easy, learning new questions that are difficult but very common, and lastly, keeping all that material fresh. The first assignment is to get the level up. Students start at 330, but they can improve by playing the level challenge. If they get six questions right before getting three wrong, their score will go up and all the games on the site will get a little harder. For that first week, I usually ask them to get to a level that's a little below what they're scoring on practice tests. So if they're around a 570, I might ask them to get to a 540. This shouldn't take more than about 20 or 30 minutes. When you meet, have them share their screen and go to their analyze page. Here you can see the stats and questions they've answered. Green ones are the ones they got right. Red means they got them wrong. If it's yellow, they ran out of time. I like to encourage students to read the explanations anytime they get a question wrong, or if they think it took too long to answer. I also like them to star questions they have trouble with. This will save the question to a list, and we can view it throughout the process. When the level's pretty accurate, I would start working on category challenges. These are short quizzes that target specific content areas at different levels of difficulty. If your student is scoring in the 500s, they probably need to shore up their fundamental skills. In this stage, I'd focus particularly on algebra moves, proportions, and linear equations. Algebra moves focuses on common algebraic operations like cross multiplying and distributing or adding numbers to both sides or factoring out constants. Linear equations focuses on things like the slope formula, y-intercepts, word problems, and other common variations. And then proportions games mostly focus on ratios, rates, and percents. There are a couple ways you can assign these category challenges. If one area is particularly troubling, you might want to have them do the whole row up to their current level. So you might say, get all the algebra moves badges up to level 590. But if you think they're okay on the easier ones, you might just say, get four badges at level 590. When they're comfortable with that 590 material, I'd ask them to play the level challenge again. And throughout the process, you'll kind of be toggling back and forth between these two assignments. If the level's too low, play the level challenge. If it's accurate, work on the category challenges. Now you will be covering a lot of material and the games can help students keep it fresh. If they only do quadratics one week, then only exponential growth the next, they may forget some of the problem types. But these games cover all of the categories. So if the student is slipping in a certain area, you'll know about it. A typical assignment might be, see if you can break the bank this week or play five games with your choice. As they improve, you'll probably have to help them with more difficult concepts, like systems of equations or quadratics. In this phase, I like to use the quiz creation tool. So let's say we're working on systems. I'll click on the systems tag, turn off the timer, and then scroll through the list. If I don't want a question, I hit the trash can. When I have what I want, they start the quiz, and we can work through the questions together. Towards the end of the process, we'll focus more on the harder quadratics and advanced equations. Students don't need to get every single question right on the test in order to get a 700, but they do need to be rock solid on common questions. Things like circle equations, the discriminant, finding the x-coordinate of the vertex, those all have to be automatic. As we enter the last couple weeks, I like to have students focus on a couple different areas. One is the starred questions. We want to make sure there aren't any common ones that are still bothering them. But I don't want to focus too much on super hard questions because a student is just as likely to get one wrong by making a small mistake on an easy or medium question. So I also like to use the score predictor. It covers all the categories and difficulty levels. It's a great daily 10 minute assignment in that week leading up to the test. If you have any questions about any of this, please email me at mike at mathchops.com.